Hello and welcome to Kelton Stock Advice. Today we will be discussing whether or not to buy Copart stock, ticker CPRT, renowned for their top tier customer service, the best management in the business, and their quick wait times. It is no surprise that they beat out all the competition with ease. Let's go ahead and read some reviews from satisfied customers. So Bradley V from Bothell, Bra, um, Bothell Washington says, Worst of the worst here. Had a car inspected, it said run and drive, but the engine compartment, most things were not even connected, no cooling system fluid, hoses not even attached, motor mounts loose, you cannot trust this place for anything. Carlos from Victorville says, I would give negative stars if I could. I never leave ratings, but after being treated this horribly, I, I just have to. This rating is for the main lady at the front desk, Irma. She 100% stereotyped me. I cannot comprehend how the business as big as this can have someone working with such poor customer service skills as the first person who your client come into contact with. Get it together, Kofar. Um, and this customer from Burbank says, this of people and companies should close its doors. The worst of the worst company and the people that work here think they are God better than me and you. Ethan from Universal City says a zero customer service uh, of anyhow going in to just pay and waiting forever no matter how many people are waiting. All kinds of things can go wrong with when you deal with Copart. So you may be thinking maybe he's just looking at one branch and it's a bad branch. Maybe he's just picking out the bad ones. But here I have printed out reviews. That is one and a half stars. That is one and a half stars. Another one and a half stars. And one star. So then you must be wondering how in the world is he going to say and argue for that, that um, we should buy this company um so i've personally bought from copart many times and i also report the exact same awful cost customer service i mean recently we bought a car and a very expensive headlight was missing when we went to pick it up so it's it's definitely bad um customer service but it still works um, Copart is an online auction house specially in salvage vehicles. What this means is, say you get in a car crash, the insurance hopes to repair the damage and send you on your way, but often the repair cost is at an amount that makes it more cost effective just to buy you a new car. So in this scenario, your car will go to Copart or IAA, which we'll touch on shortly. They sell the car on behalf of the insurance company and keep a good amount of profit. Not just anyone can open a salvage auction house. Copart has been around for, since 1982 and has connections and bonds with insurance companies that are exclusively from um, that are exclusively from for Copart and IA. With a low threat of entry, what about existing co competitors? There is just one, and that is IA. IA is much smaller than Copart, and a large majority of buyers double dip buying from both Copar and IAA and the money to, to go around is plenty. Copar has thousands of people who rely on them for business and some may buy 20 cars a day or even more. There are many repeat customers since what Copar is is doing so is doing is supplying cars for businesses whether it be auto rebuilders or wrecking yards and there are people making six figures a year off of copart and even more than that and this is all come and this is all supplied by copart and they will keep buying for the years to come so now that you're introduced to copart how do the metrics look i have a little copy here and there's quite a bit of green and a little bit of red but it's all in the good price category so now let's talk about that so the three-year EPS growth without NRI is 20.9. This means that as investments in shareholder amounts increase, it, so does their revenue um, responding strongly to the increase. So this is good because it shows 
that as they get more money in from investors, they are really using that money to help them grow and help them um, help them make more money. And that just goes back to the investors in an increased stock. Three-year revenue growth is 14.8. Three-year revenue growth rate measures, as you'd expect, the revenue growth between three years ago and present day. An increase of 14.8 is a strong number that shows they're bringing in much more revenue now compared to three years ago. You always want a company that's growing in their revenue. That means they're making more and more money as time goes on. The ROE is 30.94%. The ROE or rate of return on equity simply measures how good the financial gain or loss on average of a stock is for the stockholders. 30.94% is good, um, is a good respectable number here and points to us having a good rotate rate of return on investment if we buy Copart. We see the net margin at 34.26 as a solid number. The net margin is a measure of profitability taking into consideration the revenue and the net income. So what they do, um, so what they bring in versus what they actually take away in profit, which means they have low costs to run and yield high profit. So this is a very good sign. It means they're not they're not spending too much money and they're making a lot of money. Um, and this net margin is expanding, which means that the company is becoming more efficient and the profit yield is only getting better as time goes on. The assigned predictability rank of Copart is 4.5 out of 5 stars. This shows Copart won't be crazy volatile stock. They are steady and a steady stock with these metrics is bound to do well and add profit to our portfolio in the long run. Now is it a good, at a good price? Since our investment philosophy would rather see us getting a great company than a good price, I'll quickly summarize the good price summary. The forward rate of return sits at 21.07, which greatly exceeds our benchmark and means that um, this, will be, this will definitely be a stock that can make us money in the long haul. The P-E ratio, or the price-earnings ratio, is 36.36, which, is higher, which is higher than we'd like. Ideally, it would be below 24.47, but is much lower than the average of our screen stocks, which is 89.7. And so, that, um, so the good price metrics definitely are not as strong as the great company, but I still say we should absolutely buy. It's a diverse stock to add to our portfolio. And it's a and it's clearly shown to be a great company. And yeah, I'd say absolutely buy.